You may have realized that being healthy feels different than it did in the past now that you're over 50. If you want to maximize your health potential but don't have time to read through overwhelming pages of Google links, this is the show for you. Welcome to Healthy Tips After 50. We love doing the research, finding solutions, talking to health experts, and learning what works and what doesn't. Now, your host. She spent the last 25 years dedicated to feeling her best and is here to share her best findings with you, Susan Rosen. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen, and I am back today to talk about getting some exercise every day and how important it is while we're trying to make our way through and out the other side of covid but we're not there yet. So let's talk about exercise and how good exercise is for you. And as everyone knows, it was good for you before COVID and the ongoing lockdowns. And it's still good for you for the same reasons. And that is that exercise is good for both your body and your mind. And these days we need support in both areas, no matter your age, or your degree of health. With so many of us hanging out at home because we're working from there, we're taking care of kids who are doing online learning and or we've been laid off from our jobs or some combination of all of these, I'm sure there's actually probably some other things as well to throw in. It's become even more important to make time in our schedules to exercise, even if it's just going out for a walk. Personally, I go for one or two walks a day and we've just bought a weight bench and some weights, which I'm just starting to use. I had been using bands and my body weight to do exercises for my shoulders and back in particular as a part of my continuing recovery from breaking my collarbone a little over a year ago. But now I want to get my whole body back in the shape I was in before the accident. And I can't go back to my gym because it's not open. Oh, well, back to the main subject here, exercise, not me. Exercise can make not just the body feel and be healthier. It's also a stress reliever and it can help give you an attitude adjustment. All you really need to do is 30 minutes, three to five times a week to feel the benefits and you will, you'll find them coming through to you very quickly. You may find you like it so much you'll want to do it more often or for longer periods of time or both. Remember though, don't overdo it. It'll feel really easy the first time you lift some weights or maybe not. And you may add on too much weight for what you're used to. And that can derail your exercising for days or weeks while you recover. There are really a number of ways to exercise at home and you can find one that you like and will do. That's the important part. You can find workouts online through websites or on social media like Facebook or Instagram. If you went to a gym before COVID, check to see if they're providing any kinds of online workouts and or classes. A lot of gyms are doing that to show their appreciation of their members and to keep up their relationships with them so that people will come back when they actually reopen. So take advantage of that if they are doing it. There are also many classes and workouts where you can see others in the group and feel like you aren't alone and aren't the only person learning how to do new exercises. Not to mention the fact that you still, even though it's online, you still get some of that interaction that makes us human. And so that's one of the things that all of us are really missing. So this is another good way to get that connection, the connection that we all need to keep us going. Another kind of exercise. There are also a lot of other kinds of exercises you can learn yourself or do in a class online. Things like yoga, tai chi, ballet or your dance, and Pilates. Those are just a few examples. I know there's a lot of others. There's judo and karate. It just goes on and on. 
The other advantage of being in a group online is that you can maintain better form and get feedback from others about how you're doing. Form is important because if you change your position by only a few inches, it could be the difference between getting stronger or getting hurt. Don't assume that because it feels like what you think it's supposed to feel like that you're doing it correctly. If you're doing this by yourself, then get a mirror and use it to check your form at each point of the exercise. In fact, you may want to get a couple mirrors so you can see your back as well. Something else to include in your program are HIIT workouts. HIIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. And in essence, what it means is to work out long enough and at a high enough intensity that your heart starts beating faster, you're breathing heavily, and you'll probably even be sweating. Depends on if you're doing this outside or inside. You don't have to do it for very long, but you do need to do it on a regular basis. It's very good, especially for your heart, lungs, and muscles. If you, and your bones, don't forget about your bones. If you search for HIIT workout online, you will be able to find many, many different kinds. And I'm sure you'll see one that will work with your environment, with your lifestyle, and with what you like to do for exercise. It might be something new. It could be as easy as going for a run or a fast walk for 20 to 30 minutes. The level you want is to be able to talk, but not sing. Strange, huh? There has been a lot of research showing how important HIIT workouts are to our overall health. And like everything else, start out slow and build up by doing five to 10 minutes of HIIT and then adding on another five minutes every five to seven days or whenever your level feels too easy for you especially for those of us over 50 and not used to exercising regularly. That's when it's easy to hurt yourself and it takes a lot longer to heal at our age than it used to when we were young. You can also do a longer session. You could do 20 minutes, but then don't make it as hard of a workout as you go along. Start lessening it so that you're not pushing yourself. And then each time you can just go a little bit further before you start lessening it. That's another way to do it. It's also very important to do HIIT exercise because it will help you to strengthen your lungs and your breathing. And as long as COVID is still around, we all need to make our lungs and our hearts as strong as possible. That is where COVID loves to attack. And if your lungs and heart are strong, you will be able to fight COVID off more successfully. I also read that doing deep breathing exercises is another way to strengthen your lungs. It will get the air deep into your lungs and will help clear secretions that congregate in the lower parts of your lungs. These exercises can also lower your heart rate, stabilize your blood pressure, and lessen your anxiety. Those are all things that we probably could use all the time in our lives. If you get some bands, you should get the kind with the multiple colors as each color is a different strength. Bands are really good. They, they work your muscles. They are of different strengths. So you can start improving and building your muscles up. And you can also buy handles that you can attach to the ends of the bands and use for certain kinds of exercises. They are not very expensive. So you can try, even try a couple of different kinds or get, you know, two sets so that you can do one in each arm depending on, or leg or whatever, depending on what the exercise is. And you can also do the same thing with weights and perhaps a mat to use along with this. Interestingly, using bands also activates your core muscles more than doing other exercises. And your core muscles are all of those in your, your back and your, I guess, what would that be? Your, I just call it your core. Um, the, the mid part of your chest. So not the top, not where the breasts are, but below that. Bands are also 
easy to take with you if you have to do any traveling. And especially now, because the gyms and the hotels, I believe, are pretty much all closed. Okay, I think that's enough information for you to be able to start or up-level an exercise program that you're already doing. You can research workouts online. You can buy books if you want to build your own. You can find and join a couple of different scheduled online workouts or pop in a DVD or CD to exercise along with. There isn't any excuse <clears throat> to just sit on the couch, eat, and watch movies. You can exercise, watch movies, and eat afterwards. That sounds like a good plan to me. Well, just kidding, I think. Anyways, let me know what kind of exercise you're currently doing to feel better, stronger, and healthier, and anything that you find in looking around for something different. Maybe you'll be changing up your exercise program. I'm really interested to find out what people are doing, what they're enjoying, what actually gets them to do the exercise program on a, on a regular basis. And let me know also if there's a particular person whose workouts you really love, because I would love to be able to follow that person and see what it is that they're doing. So that's it for today's podcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and got some information. I didn't want to get too far into the weeds on it because it really is, everyone has their own choice and the kinds of exercise that they like to do. It is very personal, as I well know. So that's it for today. I will let you guys know that, or people know that I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. If you are having any sorts of medical issues, please contact your own doctor or the emergency room. And so with that, I will look forward to talking to all of you next time. This has been Healthy Tips After 50 with Susan Rosen. To stay on the cutting edge of the most effective health strategies, subscribe to this podcast and let us know what you thought of the show with a comment or like on iTunes. Visit HealthyTipsAfter50.com for this episode's show notes, more resources, and free offers.